Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We are joined by a consultant for the Lagos State Safety Commission and a private investigator as well. That is Falsad Shokumbi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me us. here. Thank you. And Edel Kabir for the past two days. How are the holidays for you? They were wonderful. Amazing. I'm still filling in. <laughs> I haven't eaten any ram, though. The closest I got was a plate of jollof rice and ram, which is in my fridge. Oh, was it the smoky jollof rice with the firewood? The firewood, yeah, that's, that's compensating That's the real jollof rice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So now, what piqued your interest in investigating or being involved in private investigation? Okay, you want the truth? The truth. Okay, when I was younger, like in my 20s, what I really wanted to do was be a sniper. And then coming from Nigerian parents, you know, that wasn't going to fly. So I was like, okay, I'll stay in, like, law enforcement and everything. Since my mom had prayer mates, it's like, oh, my daughter wants to be a hired assassin. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so let me be a police officer. So I started parole and probation. I was a juvenile probation officer for some time. I was a social worker. So I did things in the social relations field. And then... I ended up doing crime scene investigation, like my first investigation. So you're the real CSI we're watching right now. Yes. This I is would... actually so exciting because was... I love everything to do with crime. Really? I know it sounds Me weird. Me too. Like well. when I learned how to do fingerprints with powder, I got home, I would be dusted everywhere. And mommy, daddy was here. Oh, <laughs> she wow. Was here. I would Amazing. dust everywhere. So I was always into security and crime scene. I grew up in southwest Philly. So there was a whole bunch of crime going on around me. So I'm like, what made me get into that? But I guess I was just always that <laughs> weird. <laughs> now, you mentioned <laughs> taking powder and putting your fingerprints there and testing and out with forensics. And so let's speak about the state of forensic evidence in Nigeria today. Well, luckily, Lagos State now, we have a forensic crime and investigation lab where they're using to investigate crimes and we do DNA and they do DNA and everything there. The last um, incidents, the hotel dollar fire. fire, they investigated. That's how they were able to use the DNA and pair victims with their family members and everything. So we're actually improving, and Lagos State is the only one that has one. And I hate to keep tooting our horn, but <laughs> Lagos State is the only one that has a forensic science and crime lab. But that's great development. That yes, is great yes. development. What can we do differently to help with crime investigation okay. in Nigeria? Okay. When you get to a scene of a crime, you're not sure if it's even a crime scene yet. But anywhere you get to that you feel that something has happened, what you do is you stay back. Don't touch anyone. Don't touch anything because you don't want to leave your DNA there and be seen as a suspect because it'll take them long before they verify that. It's not actually you that committed the crime. Make sure you listen, look, and smell for potential danger. And stay cautious and be aware of your surroundings because if there was someone that actually, the suspect is still there, and you're seen there. No one wants any witnesses, so you just have to be careful. So this is for the individual who suspects. Who's but what are for, as a country, as a people, what can be done differently? Lots of the time, there have been several complaints as to the fact that we don't have a database, collect, collated database of information, data central collection. database, exactly. Yeah. So what are the other things you feel that can be done to improve or to help with crime investigation in Nigeria? Well, actually, we're improving our database with the Lagos State Forensic Science and DNA. We actually, we're compiling a DNA database now, and we're trying to compare with other companies like the people that did BVN. So we can now have a central database where crimes are coming. And thanks to social media, a lot of crimes are being solved through social media. It's weird, but people, like you said earlier, when Kim Kardashian went and posted something, that's the same way we have dumb criminals that actually well, smart criminals that will actually go and post stuff that makes it easier, easier for us to locate them. So Interesting. Let's mm -hmm. speak about crime in, let's, let's take Lagos State first of all as a mm -hmm. model, then we'll take Nigeria as a whole. What, is, what would you say about the current state of security in Lagos today? Lagos security has actually improved. For me to say I'm going to re relocate from U.S. five years ago to Nigeria, that means security has really improved. There was a time when I come to Nigeria, my mom was like, you can't go to Osho, do you? No, 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 I have to go up and down with Mopo. Now I can actually drive in Lagos at 12 a.m. and not be scared because of the police. Then Lagos State, they're making so many efforts with them. Um, we now have this Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps. You see them around everywhere, and they help the police out. They give them information. Anytime they have suspects, they inform the police about these things. 
So security but how actually... efficient are the police? We had a huge yeah. issue with the NSARS campaign that led to the acting president at the time, Mimio Shimbajo, calling for an overhaul. Yes, the police, well, we don't want to say that on national TV. Well, we're trying, we're getting there. But Lagos State, besides working, besides just depending on the police, we have these safety, like we have Lagos State Safety Commission to make sure there's safety throughout all works of life, like to avoid incidents and injury and everything. And that's why we have our neighborhood, even though they're not the police, we do work hand in hand with the police. And they do actually arrest people, hold suspects, and then get, because you know the police, once you call them in Nigeria, they might not get there on time. So when we have this, our neighborhood watch that's first on the scene, they do help out. All right, we're looking at the state of security in the nation, and we know as well that it's the people that make up the nation. So let's exactly. talk about the safety and the security of the everyday of Nigerian. The nation, what yes. are some of the tips that you'd give to Nigerians with regards to ensuring that they're safe and they're secure in the country? Be vigilant. That's number one. You know, we can't improve safety 100%, but we could reduce crime. Be vigilant. Don't put all your business on social media. Keep your doors locked. Don't walk at night. Like, basic little things. Do you get to, like, fire? Or like I said, look and smell for danger. When you hear gunshots, our Nigerians, what do we do? We run. We run no, we run towards the scene because we want to see what's happening. You don't do that. You run. You get as low as you could. You lay on the floor. Then fire incidents. Stop, drop, and roll. A lot of people... They're not familiar with the whole stop, drop, and roll situation. And then what Safety Commission is also doing, I know we're going back to Lagos State, but it starts somewhere. We have Safety Week. We're trying to get the children where they're young, where we go into schools and we talk to them about safety. Don't talk to strangers. Don't take things from strangers. Don't do... Don't walk by yourself. Have the whole buddy system. And then we're coming out with whistles, something like the alarm you talked about. Yes, Whistles for kids to have around their neck with an identity badge and everything. So most kids don't know their parents' numbers. You know before it's like 911 or 119 in London, but we don't have that in Nigeria. We do, actually, but I don't know how effective. Okay, we yes, one sorry, one we do. We have the emergency. We do, we do. But... Children will remember that. True. So you let them remember one of their parents' phone numbers. You teach them to cram phone numbers and stuff like that. So. Interesting, interesting. So. Now, I'm very, I'm very interested in you as a private investigator, and okay. I think that's pretty cool. What does it take to be a private investigator? Um, I did a lot of self-defense training, investigative training, and basically it's my experience from U.S. that's combined in a few courses in private investigation. Do we have such trainings in Nigeria? I think we do, yes. But there's not that many private and guest investigators in Nigeria. There's a lot of security outlets. Um, there's a lot of background check outlets. Well, few background check outlets, but actual private investigation when I, like... Um, trail people. You know. We do that in Nigeria, right? Yes, we oh, do wow. have a few. People so that you do could that. just be on your own and somebody's actually, actually trailing you. Oh, wow. But it's not always private investigators trailing you. So that's when we go so back to safety. So how do we safety. now exactly be, be careful to avoid people trailing you? How um, do you, you change what do your you routine? What do you do if you notice? Uh -huh. You change your routine. Some days you have this way to get to work. The next day is you'll take a different route. Like, don't be predictable. Don't let someone say that, okay, Layla, at 6 p.m., she's going to be here doing this because you're yeah. an easy target. So be unpredictable. And that's, that's word for me. I think I'll take that from today. Yes, change your routine. It was hard for me, especially since I don't really know my way around. So once I learn my way to somewhere, that's the way I'm always going to take. But... I'm like, okay, you can't keep doing this every day because there's this particular person always waiting for you at this spot. Mm. So, but like I said, lock your doors, um, take self-defense classes. Like I used to take boxing three times a week and then go to the gun range. But you know, this is like kind of illegal in Nigeria. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's the boxing one is not illegal. The boxing one is not illegal, but the gun range. So, um, just try and keep your safe as self safe as much as possible. I'll always let someone close to you, know exactly where you're going. And this one is very important mm -hmm. for people that are going to go and do some kind of runs. So mm -hmm. When you're going to see man or you're going to see woman, yes, you have that please close send friend a text you to your friend to say, oh, like I'm going to be age, so My mom so still makes me say, if I'm going to sleep out, she'll be like, oh, yeah, Sandy. I just, I'm just like, mom. Oh, yeah, my mom does it all the really? time. Yeah. My daughter's 12, though. Like. <laughs> <laughs> my mom literally does <laughs> it 24-7. Like, and if I don't send it on time, she'll go, hello? 
Where are you? I didn't ah. get the text. I'm sending it. Even my friends are like, please, um, Fausa's mom, she needs her address. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting, so, interesting. anything can happen. But anything. Fausa, I would say that one of the greatest security issues that we are facing in Nigeria today is that of gender-based violence. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. I personally do not feel as though it's being curtailed quick enough, especially with more recent statistics it's showing wrong. that one in three women and one in eight men are survivors of sexual violence. How, do, how is the Lagos State Safety Commission planning on incorporating any policies around this, working with the DSVRT, et cetera? What can okay. we expect? Well, Safety Commission, where I'm actually working on something with the DG, um, Honorable Hakeem Dixon. We're discussing um, consultants providing self-defense classes for women and making women feel more secure in their environments. Like I said, equipping them with self-defense classes. If men know we're equipped, with such things that we can actually take them down. I think they'll think twice before harassing them. Because you'll see it on the streets. Like even, you could be driving in our Lagos streets. I'm sure you would have experienced this before, where one man would just come, maybe hit the side of your car, and he's wrong, but he'll start arguing with you. Oh, Why? it happened to me. Yeah, it happens to me all the yeah. time. And they'll start arguing with you and cursing you out like you're wrong. Why? Because you're a woman. Yeah. But what's that? You and know, that notion in Nigeria, can women my... can't drive. <laughs> oh, yes. That, that, that's it. Very, that's I can a thing, drive actually. better than like half the you. people on the streets here. I shouldn't be bragging. <laughs> no, <laughs> what we're talking about, what we're talking about um, security with regards to sexual violence, what would you say are some of the tips you'd give out? Because a lot of the time, we will, we will still keep hearing issues of sexual violence, unfortunately. Exactly. You know, we'll still we can keep reduce it. We can eliminate exactly. it. Exactly. We can reduce but it. But can, what are the tips you'd give We can to... be more equipped. Self-defense, like the um, ones you showed on TV, they were actually really good. Self-defense, um, always let, be aware of your environment. Let people know who you're going with, what you're, who you're, what you're doing, and who you're going with. And don't make yourself a victim. Always be bold. Like, you're only victimized if you act like a victim. Do you get it? If they feel like, okay, she's timid, I can get away with, like, doing this and that to her. But when you're bold and they're like, ah, let me just be careful. This one might give me a run yeah. for my money. So Let's speak about cybersecurity too, though, because I know that in Nigeria we do have laws around cybersecurity, but how enacted are they? Um, with cyber, there's actually a few ways to make your system safe, but that's like a whole nother class you'll have to attend to make your because you know in Nigeria we have the people that hack systems. We have a lot of hackers in Nigeria, if you don't oh, know. Yes. <laughs> and then a lot of new devices that we use to clone people's information. I'm sure you've probably been a victim of this text that goes out, um, send your BVN number, reset, send me your ATM number. So what we have to do is we have to make sure our systems are safe from the settings. We'll go back to the settings and boost up and our And we need to even be careful software, of the websites. The websites. Well. And so don't click on, no matter how pretty it seems, like all these new games to download on your phone, don't download them. When you open an email, don't open that email that has a link to it. Even all these, especially around the holiday times, that's when they send these WhatsApp messages to click and say hello and everything. Even though it might be safe, you never know which one is actually a fraud, so you don't do it. Um, when they tell you to upgrade your, um, your software for certain apps, sometimes don't do it unless, you're, unless you go to the actual app store by yourself and press update. Not the one that's sending a link to you, no, telling you click on this don't link to click update. on those links. And I also hear about it. websites when you have when you have to visit a website, check the website to see that there's HTTPS. Yes. yes, meaning that it's secure. So, mm -hmm. and if there's also, um, I think a red padlock or so. Yes. Do yes. not visit it because exactly. it's not safe. Not secure. And then your cookies, turn off your cookies because people actually hack and use those things to see what you like and use those links to actually send to your email so that you could click on them. Interesting, interesting. One thing that I'm also very interested mm -hmm. in touching on while you're here mm -hmm. is that of something that we've been seeing in the media a lot of recent, but somehow it seems to have died down. Now, the mm -hmm. IGP came out not too long ago stating that he wanted to take away police personnel from VIPs and everybody was going to have to re-register if you wanted to get your police back because there were too many people in the system with uh -huh. police attached to them. That probably shouldn't have police attached to them. Is there any more updates on this? Because it seems to have gone quiet now. It's quiet, but I think they're still in the process of removing police from those personnel. But I think they're going to actually 
focus more on it after the election. Okay, we'll keep our fingers yeah, crossed yeah. and see how that plays out. It's not been today. They've been on this matter for a while. Talking yeah, about, for a while. You know, but I stripping. think after election, most of these things will be enforced. You know, a lot of these people are running for office. They need security and stuff like that. And you know, when election is coming up... There's more violence. They, yes. So we need security. We need to be safe. We need to be vigilant, especially yeah. around this period and festive seasons. You know, that's when all the crime happens. And then... So I think this is a very important mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. to have now because mm -hmm. we're approaching the end of the year. Exactly. And it's a time when lots of the crimes are being committed. Exactly. Why? I'll, I'll also like to mention that there's this thing that happens in Lagos. I don't know if it happens in other parts of Nigeria where you see very responsible men or women and they have like the doctor's stethoscope on their car or the and lawyer's wig and they're actually thieves. So no, what they do is they tell you too, go into yeah. the back of the car. Oh, we'll drop you where you're mm -hmm. going to. And when you get there... They, they don't even take you to where you're going to. Along yes, the line, they, they cock their guns and tell you if you make so, make any noise, they'll it shoot happens, you. It's actually happening on the island. I, I know of three people it's happened to. The same storyline, the same plot. That case. Exactly. The same storyline, same plot, wow. the same way. Yes. And then they tell you, just thank your God. Where are you from? Are you Igbo? Thank yes. your God that you're Igbo. Yes, if what not, church do you would go have to? killed you today. So I have they open your, your text messages and they look through all your alerts. And they have POS actions. Exactly. So you transfer all the money there. So please be careful, guys, as you're going home. Mm -hmm. All those one-chance guys have taken new mm -hmm. tactics. Be careful, be vigilant. Do not enter the car because you saw it's a stethoscope so or you saw a wig. Exactly. It doesn't guarantee that. What advice would you I give to people that, though, that. Case. You did? Yes. That's all, amazing. There was four um, kidnappers. They're not just thieves. They're kidnappers. If they feel like they can kidnap you, and once they, it goes based on your balance, once they check your account balance, and you know there's only a certain limit you can transfer per day, if you have more than that limit, they'll keep you until all the money is exhausted. If you don't have up to that limit, they'll take that money out, and then they'll drop you on the side of the road. And the funny thing is this particular crime you're talking about happens on, on the, the island. island. Exactly. Like on that body lawn, all the joggers. Carry your pepper spray. Pepper spray is illegal, but self-defense. Wow. Oh, is pepper spray illegal That's in Nigeria? Is, but I keep pepper spray. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know it was actually illegal in Nigeria. Well, I heard it was illegal, but I haven't seen it in law. But I haven't heard about that. This is the first time. Yeah, I don't think it's in law that it's illegal. I've heard police told me it was illegal. There was actually a day I was stopped by the police, and I had it in my hand. I was driving at night by myself, so I keep one hand on the steering, one, one hand, hand on my pepper, pepper spray. spray. I think this is something we need to look at as well. So, the yeah. legality of that. So just be safe. Stay mm. safe. Don't it's available. Them. I know a lot of people that do have pepper spray cans, but I've mm. never heard of it being illegal. But mm -hmm. I guess that's something that we definitely have to find out. And be like, I heard that I'll around you know. the time of that Uber driver. And then the lady, yes, yes. incident. So that's when I heard it, but... That didn't stop me. So as we approach the 2019 elections, of course, like you said, security becomes yes. a bit more of an issue. What advice would you give to the Nigerian populace in terms of keeping safe? Like I said before, be aware of your surroundings. Always let someone know where you're going. Don't go out with unfamiliar friends or familiar people. Um, make sure you even investigate your friends properly because every smile is not actually a friendly yeah. face. So um, don't go out at night. If you do have to go out at night, like I said, try not to be alone. Make sure you look into everyone's face. Like, okay, I see you. Let them see that you see them, that... They can't get away without with doing anything. I think also so, sharing your live location via WhatsApp is also very important. You no, know, that's actually not really safe at oh, all. Oh, really? Either. If because, you're sharing it to somebody that you trust, maybe a family okay, member. Okay, yes. So but that means you can with know someone where you But do WhatsApp encryptions actually work? Or how accessible is it to actually hack WhatsApp? Well, it depends on who's trying to hack. Yeah. I hear WhatsApp has end-to-end -end encryption, so you don't... You're not able to see what the third That's party what it says. That's but what if you give say. your phone to me, I can hack your website. There we go. So, but it's not everybody that you have to can be high do. skilled. At exactly. the end of the day, we are not safe in this Nigeria. At the end of the day, I don't think no, we're anywhere safe. in the world. We're we're anywhere in the world, like no social media space is safe. Mm -hmm. They made us feel like okay, you can send WhatsApp messages. Nobody says that. No, but there's some newer apps that are coming out that are more safe. Like new apps come out, and the safety, the security is actually increase there's some apps that you just shouldn't use that you should run away from like skype don't use skype remember oh, wow. skype um what are some other ones but there's some other new ones that are well encrypted like bbm 
the private messaging and stuff like that. Oh, so wow. those are and that one we're actually running away from. Before we let you go, let's talk about very, something very that we don't talk about a lot. Cameras. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people that are in rooms that they're being spied on and they have no idea. We're seeing a lot of <laughs> pens that have cameras, a lot people of are glasses. People just being bugged up and down. How can we be, what should, what should we look out for? You know, when you go to a place, um, I feel like if I first thing I do <laughs> is I start looking around to think, okay, we are the it's camera. It's in my market. <laughs> <laughs> because I, this is actually my work. Um, how to be safe? Well, with cameras, the only way that you could detect hitting cameras, if someone like, comes, someone like me comes and does a security sweep, I actually do that as well security sweeping and debugging, but there's a lot of ways that you don't know. It's not, the pen is actually the old school one. The glasses is old school. The hat is old school. There are newer ones. Examples? Like watches, like um, the door hangers. Contact lenses. The, yeah, so what you can do is, if you ever feel like you're going somewhere where you're, you might be bugged, you know those old fashioned radios? Yes that uses antennas so if you can, can get one you can detect if you go near such equipment it will start static and really loud so you know that you're but when you're doing it you'll turn your phone off and everything okay. but there's equipment i use to actually debug such things in wow. this day and age you just trust nobody trust exactly. yourself even the light bulbs light bulbs like i said there's this um socket the way the socket is that red light, once they on the socket, you think they're actually charging their phone. It's a camera. It's a camera videoing you. There's light bulbs like that. Those bulbs up there, you could... I'm loving this. Yeah, I so... am absolutely <laughs> loving this. No, I am not loving this. Because I don't want to yes, go somewhere can... and someone is filming me without my knowledge. Uh, me, I don't have anything to hide. If you want to no, film me, please. film me. Even when I go to karaoke bars <laughs> and I want to sing, I don't know why, I just tell them, if I'm not doing it for professional reasons, please do not why film me. So when I go to karaoke bars, anyway. I say, please turn off the camera, I'm about to perform, because I want to feel free. I don't want to feel like you're oh. filming me in the karaoke bar and then you're that's using my, my video on Instagram, no. Mm. Okay, that's all we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank this has been a very interesting me. conversation. Thank you so much. I definitely Thanks am going to be more security conscious, yes. and you know, my trust issues right now are kind of doubling up. <laughs> <laughs> To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.